Here we have a set of pentominals, and pentominals have been used in recreational mathematics for some time. And we should just show you one or two activities that one can do with the pentominals. First of all, it's worth noting that the pentominals are made from five squares attached side by side. So the first problem is to determine how many pentominals there are. That is, how many different ways are there of arranging five squares side by side? And there are actually 12 different ways of arranging them side by side. Now, once a student has done that, that there are quite a few activities one can give them. First of all, the area in each for each is the same. Each one has an area of five square centimeters or five square units. Now, what about the perimeter? Well, let's see. This one, the perimeter is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And this one, the perimeter is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can ask the students to see just how many of them have a perimeter of 12 and how many of them have a perimeter of 10, and they can classify them accordingly. So that's one task. We can use it for measurement. Teachers also use these to look at symmetry, line symmetry. So for example, one can look at each of them and ask how many lines of symmetry does each one have? Well, clearly, this one has one line of symmetry. This one, let's see how many lines of symmetry. It's one, two, three, and four. Now this one also has if I put it like this, you can see clearly one line of symmetry. Now the one that sometimes presents problems to the students is this one, and one has to be very careful. This one clearly does not have a line of symmetry. There's nowhere I can put a line so that one side flips on top of the other. However, it does have what's called rotational symmetry. So if I look at it like this, and I give it a half turn, it looks exactly the same. So one can ask the students now to determine which of these pentominals have lines of symmetry and which of them have rotational symmetry, and they can classify them accordingly. Another task, and this is a very popular one, it's not easy, is to take your pentominals and put them together side by side to make rectangles. And the traditional problem is, what's the fewest number of pentominals needed to make a rectangle? Well, here is one made by putting three different pentomies together to make a rectangle. So this one is made of one, two, three, and we have a rectangle which is a three by five. Here's another way of arranging my pentominoes. So this one we made from three pentominoes, from three pentominoes. This one is made from four pentominoes. And we can see we've made another rectangle, which is a four by one, two, three, four, five. So one can ask the students to keep on exploring this. And a problem that is normally given is use all pen, 12 pentominals to make a rectangle. That's possible, not easy to do. So that's another line of investigation that one can allow the students. Another popular one is this one, enlargement. It's a, it's a really beautiful one. Here we have the Z, and each of these we can identify with a letter of the alphabet, so that's a Z. So can we make an enlarged version of this one by using pentominoes? So you can see what we can do. I can take these pentominoes, and I can put them together to make an enlargement of this one. Now, this opens up some wonderful problems for students. So you can say, for example, select any of these pentominoes. Let's say a T. So can you use the other 11 pentominoes and see if you can make an enlarged version of this one? And that's a wonderful up, um, task to let the, the students explore, this thing about enlargement. One more task, and that has to do with tessellation. And this one is used a lot in recreational mathematics. Which of these pentominoes will tessellate? So for example, this is an easy one. I can take this pentomino, and if I have a set of these, I can put them together, and it's clear that I can tessellate the plane with this. That is, I can cover a surface just using this rectangle. 
So the problem is, what if I had a floor and I had many T's? Could I use this T to cover, or a set of these T's to cover the surface? So another nice op um, investigation is to say, take any of these, will this one tessellate? Will this one tessellate? And that gives the, the students many opportunities to investigate um, the uses of the pentominals.